again, my name is Harsha, and I'll be talking about um, polymer printed prosthetics. So basically looking at the application of um, using polymers to print prosthetics. One is an example of something low cost for people who don't have the availability or the money. The other is something more futuristic, a little more um, out there. This is that second example. It's called U-Bionic. So the first uh, example is through a network of volunteers called Enabled. It's basically a network of designers, engineers, enthusiasts uh, using 3D printers to create free 3D printed prosthetic hands for those in need. And it's a goal to provide it to people all around the world. Um, so it's really a worldwide network. 4,000 members and growing. Uh, so again, they're innovating, continually redesigning. Example there you can see, I called them Raptor users because these kids are using Raptor hands. That's what the newest design is called. Um, print existing parts. They can create actual the whole assembly, or they can help uh, people make them themselves. So this is the newest version of their design. It's called the Raptor Reloaded. Um, it's made using PLA. Other material can be used. Uh, mostly using FDM. Um, an example of the type of machine they can use is, is there's a link there. But on the right is a CAD model, and on the uh, left is something that's actually been printed. So as you can tell, um, it's an assembly. So there's multiple parts, but it can be printed using one build cycle. There's a little bit of more schematics. Uh, you can see there, it's a little hard to read on my screen, but um, it's more complicated than you think it'd be. But it it doesn't enable gripping in the same way you'd think it'd enable gripping. But you know, the even the thought of a kid who's lost an arm being able to see that is pretty powerful. Um, and again, so it's designed for people missing fingers or arms below the elbow. It's that's as far as they go. It's nothing higher up. Um, so volunteers print these devices. They've even had examples where you can repair them with a 3D pen. So this is great. They're not fully functional, like I said, just basic grasping. Maximum weight of 5 to 10 pounds, so you can ride a bike, you know, you can eat your food. Like kids, the things kids do every day, you know, you can, you can accomplish that. So, so far they've printed 1,000 hands and for 700 people, mostly children. Again, AM was beneficial. It's low cost. It's only $35 in material, but overall, if you were to develop for somebody brand new, it would be about 200 bucks plus the cost of the printer, obviously. Um, again, no end cost to the user. Volunteers do this. Maybe some, some of these people are able to pay the material fee. Maybe that's all they pay. Customizability. So again, there's a variety of different injuries, different kids. Um, being able to size that, the joint, again, being medically approved and designing it for kids is really great. It's lightweight, so enhances uh, mo mobility and, again, comfort. The alternatives, so current prosthetics, uh, with you have to have good insurance, first of all, if you qualify, it is six to $10,000, and that's just for the parts, nothing counting visits, doctors, other specialists you'd need. So again, this is, I think, one of the biggest examples of why 3D printing is so powerful. So as you can see, um, uh, the comparison here between uh, professionally made prosthetics and the enable device in terms of different issues. Again, cost is a stark example. Don't need insurance. Um, fabrication is really easy. Can serve all types of populations, mostly undeserved, un underdeveloping, I mean, and uh, provisioning. So it's volunteers mostly, unlike certified professionals. Again, as you see, the example of this kid is really happy. It looks like he has a Wolverine. You know, again, the example of customizability. So, like, and the quote here given by one of the members, it says, there's something about the moment that goes when it goes from bring something I'm holding up to a part of my body that's almost magical. Again, so you can imagine not losing an arm and not having it growing up and seeing something like that is just so amazing. So, I don't know if most of you have seen this video, but Iron Man is going to help us out. So, yeah, here we go. Seven-year-old boy, like superheroes, comes in. Um, so, okay, so Albert Monero, he's some one of the guys is part of this network, and he's um, has a separate initiative called the Collective Project, but it's based out of in the Enable Network. So he's, the, the kid's going, he's visiting, um, um, they visit Iron Man, so he thinks he's meeting Iron Man, you know, little kids, they think actors are their actual characters, so this is, this is uh, Tony Stark right here, his, he in introduces himself as Tony Stark. Um, Later, he's showing him, you know, Stark Technologies, they've made this new development in prosthetic hands. I have one, and I brought one for you. Do you want to help me put it on? So, 
This is a special version of the enable hand. It's the raptor hand, but they actually made it much longer, and they made it more functional, and they made it part of the Iron Man suit. I want one. Um, <laughs> so you see there, like how, how happy he is and how inexpensive this was. I mean, a college student did it. Yeah, and <laughs> the funny part was when Robert Downey Jr. took it out of the box, his didn't work. There was, an, there was a problem with his. But the, but the kids was working just fine. <laughs> so, yeah, then again, they're just, they're just messing with him. You can see him grip and move it around. So, so again, um, we're going to now talk about the second application, which is, again, a prosthetic arm, but a bionic one. So something more complicated. And it's developed by a company um, to develop the first true artificial bionic hand. Um, but at a low cost, they're aware that the price, they don't want the price to be high. Again, it's a small startup company, uh, less than 20 people. They want to use 3D printing to develop prosthetic hand with advanced bionic technology. So this is their bionic hand. The new model is called Bionic Hand 2. Very original. Um, made from nylon using SLS. And you can also use FDM, apparently. So, um, And so here's a demonstration of somebody uh, showing the actual movement, gripping it can function like a real hand. So unlike the one before, which was, you know, relatively inexpensive and limited capabilities, this is way more advanced, actually responds to neural interface. Uh, they thought about doing brain interface with the machine. Um, so the user should be able to actually use it like a, any normal hand. So this, this is like um, iRobot, I right? This is that at that point. So this is here, they're demonstrating actually uh, being able to recognize those signals. So again, uh, artificial bionic hand. The goal is to sell it for $1,000. I don't know how, how real that is right now. And to be able to update it like your phone so it gets regular updates. It's modular. Uh, so for a growing child, you can, um, if, if they're growing, then, you know, they're obviously, they're going to get bigger. So you can actually change this arm for that reason. So it's developed for kids. Electrodes attach muscles, so it reads your interface, reads brain signals. And again, um, doubled to single rotation, very realistic mo movement. And it's accomplished this very by very simple in, in engineering. AM was beneficial again. They're trying to minimize production costs. So to do something as big as this at a low cost, 3D printing is very applicable. And again, for the design freedom, to be able to fit it for a growing child, to fit different types of people. And again, the alternatives right now, like we looked at, expensive, or we have this enable inexpensive with limited capabilities. So trying to take advantage of additive manufacturing here. And these are my references. <laughs>